have. I'm not real strict with my diet. I know some athletes are. Mm -hmm. um, from what I've seen, um, so much of diet is to the individual. Like right. I can drink milk, a, a ton of milk. I, you know, three milk-based protein shakes a day, mm -hmm. and I have no problems. Right. Um, some so people, you're not like counting macronutrients or anything like that. Um, I was counting calories when I was bulking in college. Um, but since then, not really. And I mean, just to give you an idea when I was like my maintenance calories is probably somewhere around right now, since my volume, my training volume is a little lower. My maintenance calories are probably around 3,000, 3,500. Okay. Um, usually it's like closer to 3,500 to 4,000. That's what I was thinking. Yeah. 4,000. Yeah. And then when I was bulking, I was eating like five to 6,000. Wow. Um, a day that was like, that's challenging. What's your, dude, it what's your grocery bill? Like? <laughs> Unreal. Dude, I, I, I can find a text from, uh, when I was, um, my junior year of college, I texted my mom and I was like, I was getting ready to come home for the winter break. And I was like, mom, I'm going to bulk this winter. So my mom just texted back in just all caps and was like, no. <laughs> and uh, she was like flashing back to the grocery bills, obviously. And um, it was it was a pretty hefty bill. I mean, even just living in college, it was, yeah. it was hefty. Um, but I mean, your, your question about diet for me specifically, I don't watch too much um, about what I eat. I really... You know, I don't lean heavily on the processed foods. If I do eat out, mm. um, you know, it's Chipotle. It's like a bowl of like veggies and meat and rice and something like that. Those are pretty good things. Yeah. yeah, I mean, it's I mean, it's still takeout. Like, what what are you gonna do? But sure. um, I'm really not like a snob about my diet. Um, protein is one of the biggest, probably the biggest focus for me. Um, and then from there, I mean, so much of it's individual. People, some people love keto, and they're like, you know, I. Really? I yeah, I mean, for a high performance athlete, I think that's really hard, but it's yeah. not impossible. Um, it's the carbs, I feel like when you're burning like that, you're gonna need those carbs. Yeah, um, I do at least. And then there, I was watching, I think a, a documentary on it was a strong man, it was like one of the world's strongest men, mm -hmm. and uh, he was vegan. And I was like, that's um, and he's huge, you know. Wait, what is I mean? that Thor? No. Uh, it's not Thor, but okay. you know, he competes in the same sport. Yeah. Um, he was his, in the Middle East, I think. I can't remember his name. Wow. Um, but he was like vegan or vegetarian. Wow. And um, I mean, he was still like, you know, looked like the yep. world's strongest man. Like, that's crazy. You know, huge dude. And I'm like, you must have to eat so much to, I to, find, to reach that. Yeah, I always find it so interesting that different diets work. Because there's no blanket statement saying like, this is what yeah. you should do if you want to compete at this level. The only thing that you can really say across all people and I think uh, Bio Lane on Instagram is a really good one. I posted him. Um, I can't remember his. It's at Bio Lane. B I O L A Y N E. Mm -hmm. uh, Lane Norton. That's his name. Okay. He, he's a PhD uh, nutritionist, I, I believe. Before, yeah. He's really good. But well, like one of the few things that you can say across all people is calories in, calories out. Yeah, like, right. Like you can't argue with that. That's just right. that's just math. Yeah. Um, but like as for what your body does and how it reacts to certain either macronutrients or ingredients in certain foods or lactose or whatever it is like that's so specific to the person yeah. me telling you like you should do this or you should do that doesn't really mean anything yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah until you try it out. yeah and then and because like because it will take a while to take effect i think if you really want to try a diet and see how it affects you you don't do it for a day or even a week like you got to do it for a month and log how you feel, how you're sleeping. Do you have headaches? Um, do you have, you know, if you're a woman, how does it affect your, you know, menstrual cycle? Like yeah. everything. Like there's so much that can be affected, it and you'll you won't know until you do it for genuinely a month straight. It's a good um, point you make about logging it too, because it's like yeah. at the end of the month, month it's, it's like you're gonna have to try to remember all that stuff. Yeah, and I think it, you're right. It's probably a lot better. It's like day in day out, be like, how do I feel today? How do I feel today? How do yeah. I feel today? And so, like, yeah, if you're going to try a diet, that's that's 100% how I recommend to do it. I'm not by any means a nutritionist, but, mm -hmm. like, you, you've got to actually stick it through. You're not going to – you're not just going to cut out milk for one day and be like, wow, that was a cure to everything. <laughs> yeah, like, right? What? No. <laughs> like, you probably still have lactose in your system if you just cut it out yesterday. Yeah. Like, yeah. So, for uh, the protein, is it a lot of chicken? Um, <laughs> I mean, I mean nice, a ton of chicken lately. Sick question. <laughs> there, 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 was a, there was a good – in uh, my junior year of college where like I just like didn't want to cook 
for a little while because I was just eating so much and I would just go to the store and get like a, a rotisserie chicken <laughs> and just eat that for dinner. Uh, but like, but I mean now, like I, I've gotten to the point where, you know, I'm drinking a, a good bit of protein shake mm-hmm. so I can eat a more balanced uh, diet Thanks in terms really. of food. Yeah. Yeah. Not a whole rotisserie chicken anymore. Yeah, <laughs> not a rotisserie chicken for dinner. Thank God. Um, what I was what I was thinking about while I was sitting here is like in terms of like nutrition and the diets, uh, Obviously, when you get to a level like that you're competing at, especially like at a national level, mm. um, there's a lot of sacrifice you have to make in your life. But I've I've just I've found it interesting seeing like people who are at the top echelons of their sport, like they'll bring like meal prep dinners out to dinner, <laughs> and yeah. like to me that's that just extreme. really it's obviously extreme. But if that's what works for them, it's what works for them. But yeah. if you could avoid that and just have a really you still have a solid life outside of training, yeah, I feel like that's awesome. Yeah, just, I like, I don't. Yeah, I, I wouldn't avoid eating out yeah. in order to eat a meal prepped uh, meal that I've made. But at the same time, like, again, I'm not picky about what I eat. Mm-hmm. You know, if, if I get a steak at dinner and, and the restaurant cooks it, I don't care if, you know, it's meal prepped or if they make it. Right. If, yeah. if I'm going out to dinner, I'll enjoy, you know, dinner with friends. Mm-hmm. But um, I think that's a good way to live. Yeah. But again, diet's so specific to people. Sometimes yeah. they like can't eat a ton of, you know, if they're going to a specific restaurant, they can't eat a ton of what's on the menu or whatever. Um, but the one I was dating a girl in college and we went out to dinner the one time and, uh, she was like, we're, we're sitting there at dinner. Like we're most of the way done our food. She's like, was that enough for you? Do you want to like go out and like stop at Wendy's on the way home too? And I was like, yeah, maybe. <laughs> she just, like she much. knew, yeah, yeah, she knew. She was like, she knows, you know, I was eating a ton. Yeah. So yeah. she was like, is that going to be enough for you? Like yeah, I was logging no. food at the time. She's like. Maybe we should stop somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> Got to hit those 6,000 calories. So, You're going to have to double up here. Yeah, Some way, yeah. somehow. Yeah, so like I had dinner, then I had dinner number two, <laughs> then I had, you know, dessert. <laughs> so um, I want to ask about what is the name of like kind of the like uh, overarching body of like the competition side? The organization? Yeah. It's USA Weightlifting. Okay. Um, very simple. Uh, yeah. But USAW or USA Weightlifting, um, they are the intermediary between, you know, Local competition. I mean, they oversee like local competitions, okay. but then um, USA Weightlifting is who hosts like nationals and stuff. And then from there, you can qualify for international teams. Mm-hmm. Um, if you want to make a Pan Ams team, which is you know America, uh, you know USA, I think Canada, Mexico, and, and a ton of island countries or South American countries. Mm-hmm. Um, and then there's World Championships, which is obviously every country. And then the uh, Olympics. Okay. So they're the they're the overarching body. Okay. So you made it all the way through up until nationals, right? This yeah, so, so in, in USA weightlifting, there's a couple different levels of, of national competition. There's okay. uh, there's the American Open, which is just open to everybody. Mm-hmm. And then there and then there's, uh, or they call it the AO. Um, there's AO2, three, and I think there's a four. And then there's AO final. Mm-hmm. Um, and then above that is nationals. Okay. So that's kind of like the ranking. Uh, my first year with Dane, I made AO final. Um, and I was like, you know, one, one like. And like as you go heavier, I assume you move up, correct? As the weights you lift get heavier, yeah, yeah so you'll start ranking really 